Hello, I'm Chris Stringer, and here I've got a replica of the Harbin Cranium, which we have just published in the journal The Innovation. So when we look at the overall skull, it's massive in size. The face is very wide, the brow ridge is very wide, huge orbits, a very wide nose, a very wide upper jaw. And yet the shape of the cheekbones is much more delicate. They're low, they're transversely flat, they almost have a modern shape to them. And the face is tucked under the cranial vault in a way that we see in modern humans. If we look at a superior view, we can see again this very large brow ridge, but not much post-orbital constriction. The brain size was very large, and we estimate it was more than 1,400 millilitres in volume. Looking at the rear of the cranium, we can see that it lacks the spherical shape we would see in Neanderthals. It also lacks a suprailiac fossa that we would see in Neanderthals. It also lacks the strong angulation and occipital torus that we would find in Homo heidelbergensis individuals. So the vault is very wide across the base and parallel sided. When we look at a basal view, again we can see how broad it is. Very broad palate, a very large second molar and no sign of third molars behind there. The mastoid processes are very large and again at the back not much sign of a strong occipital torus. And when we look at the side view, we can see that, yes, it's an archaic formation. The skull is long and low, a large brow ridge, but again, no strong angulation or strong occipital torus at the back, and the face is tucked under the cranial vault, uh, as we see in modern humans. So overall, this combination of features suggests that we have here a distinct lineage probably a new species in the middle Pleistocene of China.